Welcome to From the Ashes, the Dungeon Crawler Network podcast all about Ashes of Creation by Intrepid Studios. Bear witness to the rebirth of the MMO RPG genre from the ashes of an industry that has left the gamers behind. I am Jealous, founder of the Dungeon Crawler Network, and I am coming to you, well, we're live at this point, from the Mighty Beard Tavern, and I am joined by the one, the only, Storm's Lord. How are you, buddy? Doing awesome, doing awesome tonight. Excellent, excellent. And also, the man in the uh, other corner that bookmar- bookmarks Storm's Lord, Alpha Soul. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Loving this green screen, man. Yeah, I know. It looks pretty looks pretty sick, I gotta tell you that. And oh, the fourth co-host. That would be the chat room, because this is the first live stream that we've actually done for one of our podcasts. Normally, we do them offline. I do all my... Ed, you know my editing magic and then I release it but I think it's going to be fun to actually do this live today because we have a fun discussion planned for you guys tonight as most of you know especially if you've been following the game Alpha 1 is now underway and in fact multiple stress tests have indeed started to happen in fact we are recording this on the 13th and Alpha, I think we have a stress test in an hour, I believe. Yep, I actually, maybe even a little, oh, wait, no, in an hour. Yeah, in about an hour. About an hour, roughly, sort of, I'm, I'm not sure. It's going to be a while. But we had one last week, and we are going to give some of our thoughts about the Alpha 1 test, the stress test that went on, and uh, what our general thoughts are about it one caveat to this first and foremost before we begin there is indeed an nda in place for alpha one for any kind of visual content so those of you listening to us on itunes stitcher radio all those fun things don't go rush into the video portion thinking that we're going to be showing gameplay because we are not there is a moratorium in any of that but we are allowed to freely discuss what we experience so that is what we're going to do before we hop into that, though, I got to give a shout out to our newest patron subs, Happy Ansel, who uh, is in chat. Hello, Happy. You're pretty awesome. Um, he upped his pledge again this month. T Elf, T Elf, thank you so much. They're very active on the forums. I see them a lot and they interact with us a lot, especially even on our YouTube page. And of course, Spectral Spire. Thank you so much, guys. You are amazing supporting us over at patreon.com slash dungeon crawler network. You help keep the metaphorical torches lit and our shows running. Thank you so much. Guys, Alpha One happened. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was. It was. Um, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the very first test was only about 250 people total, give or take a few here or there. Um, it, it's, it's pretty nuts. But, oh, dear heaven above. I just, wow. We should do this more often, guys. We have over 100 people watching us right <laughs> Awesome. Oh, cool. Creation happened there. Awesome. Well, welcome to all the new people who are watching there. Um, so Alpha 1 started, and I got to say, right off the bat, I'm glad they did not let us stream this thing, right? Because I know there were people saying, hey, you said there's not going to be any NDA for Alpha 1, blah, 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 blah. Even though technically this is a stress test you wouldn't even say it's alpha once so i was fine with it but i know we ran into some server issues isn't that right alpha oh yeah we ran into issues up and down uh and i think the most consensus i think the most anyone got to play was maybe two matches or yeah. potentially three out of it you know out of the whole time that we were actually there the majority was just fighting you know to kind of get in and work through these issues so it's it's a good thing that they didn't actually uh stream it or allow us to stream it I'm not really sure how I should feel about Banmorth in chat. Says I love that everyone I see in this game is an old man like me. Ouch. Uh oh. Ouch. Damn. True, but uh oh. Oh yeah, no, I totally agree. But still, <laughs> man, I used to pride myself on these young looks, man. But damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it all catches up. 
Right. It really does, and it catches up faster than you really want it to actually happen. But anyway, so yeah, there were issues up and down. Like, I know there were multiple times where <laughs> we would get into a game itself, if we got into the game, and then the server would just crash. We'd actually have the developers actively within chat telling us, hey, guys, it's time for you to uh, back it up. Yeah. Right? Back it up. Close the client. We're going to refresh the server. It it was pretty messy, but for anyone who's actually been in these tests before, it's not something that I would, you know, I would say is a bad thing. And uh, thank you, Bad Lad Jr., for the five months in a row sub on Twitch. Man, that rocks. Thank you. Um. Cool. Alpha, how long did yeah. it take you to actually get into a game? And what were your kind of first thoughts when you hopped in? Yeah, so, um, I mean, the cool thing overall was the fact that, I mean, I, I think most people who were in that first test kind of understood that, um, you know, this is an alpha test and it's the alpha stress test. So there's going to be issues. So we kind of went in expecting there to be issues. And there were, uh, mainly around the connection. And my first impression when I got in was... Uh, you know, I saw the splash screen and everything like that, and I was kind of like, ah, eh, you know, uh, wasn't so much into it. Can't really go into detail on it. But then I got in game, and I was actually pretty blown away by what I saw, just because, uh, you know, everything that they're showing within their trailers, it's that's the actual game, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it looks beautiful. The controls were responsive. It feels beautiful, and I had really good luck where the first time I connected, I actually got in a game. Uh, of 50 people and you know uh, very first experience was smooth and then you know it was a lot of testing back and forth uh, to try and get in right right i know <laughs> i got into one of the very very first games and i, I was a little confused how it works because when they threw you in and there's memes already going around that they should really just rename the game to <laughs> yeah yeah uh, what is it? Ashes of Fortnite, I think, is the one that yeah, I heard yeah. most recently. It really does. This arena mode that they throw, it's Fortnite. 100% Fortnite. Like, I don't know how many people actually play it that much. I don't. I'm way too old to play Fortnite with all these random kids nowadays. But... <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's Fortnite. Like, even so much as when you get pulled up into the air and dropped into the map, it's, you don't have a parachute per se, but you drop into the map and it, it's Fortnite. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Spectral Spire. They have Bush. They do have a Bush. They do. The funny thing was, as it was going on live, I remember you were actually uh, uh, talking about it in the channel that we had. That was just us. And as you were describing it, I'm like, that sounds like Fortnite, but I'm not sure how to actually say it. And then you're like, Oh wait, I'm dropping. It was pretty funny to actually just recount and hear you talk about it as it was happening. Right, right. And I see Ban Morth in chat says, was the full-blown character creator? No, there was literally nothing. Uh, from the, the, the UI, the, the front screen UI is very much alpha. So we're not going to go too much into it. There's no reason to explain it, but it wasn't very pretty. But... The best you could do from a character creation standpoint at this point in the alpha, and this is actually something that I noted from the alpha one videos they released before, but when you were able to select a character, you were supposed to be able to select the type of armor they were wearing. I don't know how much that actually really mattered. I, But the color changed. Like Everyone had the same suit of armor on that, that ugly elven leather yeah, yeah. armor or whatever. But depending on the color was supposed to be depending on the type of armor that you were wearing. If it was kind of that bluish, it's supposed to be the light version of armor. The red was medium and the pure white was supposed to be heavy. But to be frank, I didn't even really notice a difference. In the two games that I got to play, I did two different versions. And the first game I'll get into, but... I didn't notice a whole lot with the second one, like whether or not it made a difference at all. I think it was just cosmetic at this point. I, I think it was purely cosmetic because I, I didn't see any discernible difference between uh, choosing the two. Maybe, you know, it took, I don't know, maybe it has some modifiers depending on what you actually select. Uh, but it, you know, to be honest, 
the combat happens so fast that I'm not even sure if it makes a difference. Right, right. And it is true. Like, uh, hello, Ninja Kitten. Hey, hey. Um, I do agree. Like, it didn't feel like it really mattered what you were wearing at this point because it's very bare bones. But, like, in the game that they're playing, it's 100%. Fortnite, where when you jump in, you have a basic sword. You actually have to go around and find different spells and abilities, because I know people were asking whether or not what class we picked or whatever, because in the Alpha Zero videos um, that they released, you could tell that they actually had classes set up, like the four archetypes that were available, the tank, the mage, I guess, ranger, and I don't... cleric. Uh, that's what they showed us in the Alpha Zero videos. They didn't have any of this for this Alpha 1 test. So when you guys actually get into Alpha 1, the, you're going to be playing this very much FPS-style game right off the bat. And I see they say, how did the FPS hold up combat smooth? I will say the very first game I jumped into, I made a mistake. And when I was flying down on the parachute, I landed <laughs> inside a tower thinking like, oh, okay, this would be great because I didn't have enough time to really look at the keys. I'm like, if I land in the tower, I'll be somewhat safe. I can look at my key binds and then I can kind of run out. Little did I know I couldn't get out of that tower because there was a <laughs> collision. The entire first game, I could do nothing at all except for so, sit in this tower and wait for the map to slowly sink no, in. Were you in the middle of the map where you could win, or were you in the side where you oh, could Oh, no, win? no, no. I was, yeah, no. The, <laughs> I guess PUBG yeah. does this. Does Fortnite do that where it shrinks the map yeah. down? Okay. It does. It does. Yeah. Okay. That's my son's version. He'll hide for the whole game. <laughs> um, yeah. I landed in this tower, and unfortunately, I wasn't close enough to the center but the map eventually closed in and then killed me. Now, the <laughs> second time when I did actually get the play, I will say, once again, preface this by saying that there were only 250 people on this server. All right? So let's, let's take it back and just assume this is 250 people and not even 250 people on the server. 250 people on the server. How many people were in the test? 30 was the round they did? Uh, I... <laughs> It was it was between 30 and 50, depending on when you went in, because the first game I went in was 50 people. The second game was I think it was 40 uh, people. But I saw another time that I had gone in. It was 30 before I got kicked out. OK, yeah, I think they made a change halfway through the testing where they changed it from 50 to 30 to get more people in. And that caused, uh, you know, games to spawn faster. But, you know, we'll get into that at that point. Um but the combat was definitely buttery smooth. I will say, when I was in the game, I had no issue whatsoever. None whatsoever. What Alpha, what about you? What did you think about the combat? Did it actually feel... You got much further in the, in the uh, one game you played. What, what did you get? Number two? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, once I was kind of uh, falling in, basically what I did, my strategy was to... Uh, aim myself for a small town where there wasn't that many uh, potentially people that would be there so I can go ahead, gear up, grab as many things as I possibly could, which I did. I ended up getting a blink spell. I ended up getting an invisibility spell. And then I ended up also getting uh, this spell that, uh, or not a spell, it's like an on weapon hit where if you hit someone with uh, your mace, basically anytime they move, they take damage, right? So it was kind of a skill that's meant to keep you close to them or to keep them from running. Uh, so I grabbed those and I was like, all right, now it's time to start, you know, hunting people, basically. So I went off, uh, found one person, uh, killed him pretty easy. Uh, and then, you know, the map was closing in. And I, my, the whole goal that I was trying to do, because I'm thinking like Fortnite, is, you know, kind of circle around and uh, try and have my back to things, you know, as much as I possibly can. Uh, you know, and then I go, I see two people fighting. One guy kills the other guy. I jump in, kill the other guy, do another leech kill. Uh, pretty simple. Find another guy, kill him as well. And then now at this point, the map is getting really small. And there's like about, I'd say about five of us left. And you Meanwhile, know, I see... I'm still in the tower, just waiting for the map. To... <laughs> uh, and I see 
Uh, I, 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 no, I don't see anyone. I hear someone. So you can actually hear the combat going on if you're close enough. So I hear someone fighting off to my left and I start running towards that direction. And I see one guy at the top. And at that point, there is three people left. Me, the guy that I see, and a guy that I don't see. And the circle is actually really small. So uh, I start fighting with that guy and I barely kill him. So I'm left with like 10 HP. No, I won't even say like 10 HP. I think it was probably like 25% of my HP. And I look around, I can't find the last guy for the life of me. I think, and at that point I got sniped, lost. And I think he was invisible because I honestly did not see him at the point that I was at until I looked around and I saw him come running out. So he, he was either invisible or he was a bush, one of the two but he just kind of came running out of nowhere. There was a bug, and that's something that's really annoying because there was a bug that actually made people 100% invisible because that's who killed me in the second round because I was running around. I got that snare mace, which was pretty fun because I hit somebody with the mace, and then I kited them, and they actually killed themselves trying to get to me because it had that snare on them, and they weren't paying attention to what yeah. it was actually doing, um, which was cool. The thing that sort of happened afterwards was I noticed there was a guy running around who was 100% visible. You could see his sword, but that was it. He ended up killing me. And I, I heard that was actually sort of an issue going on that the invisibility was bugged throughout the thing and called. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense because when I used the invisibility, what I didn't realize, like I, I assumed when I used it uh, that it would go off on hit. Or mm -hmm. something of the sort. Like if I did some action, like cast a spell or something like that, it would be gone. It actually didn't do that. It only disappeared. Like I manually took it off thinking that, okay, I need to keep it on cooldown. So when I actually see somebody, I'll go and viz, find, you know, and then start attacking that person. But I'm pretty sure that it actually would keep going if I let it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it actually lasted quite a a long time of what I thought. So that was pretty interesting. Now, here's a fun question for you. And did you actually get to destroy any of the buildings? And this is why I say it's 100% Fortnite because everything was destructible, but it was done in the panel way, the same way everything is done in Fortnite. Like the square wreck, like you could kill plate, you know, parts of the floor, they'd all fall apart. Did that really add anything to the game for you? Uh, I did not. So I swung and I hit the wall a couple times and it made a sound like it was like it could potentially be destroyed. I didn't actually try to destroy it or anything like that. I, uh, I, you know, was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And then, you know, just went about trying to get stuff and then go find people to kill. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Like, I get it. It's fine. But... I'm not really sure I like the Battle Royale within the actual game itself. Storm, since this is actually be a fun conversation for you, you actually play a few of the Battle Royale games. Do you mm -hmm. enjoy them, or do you think they actually would make a good MMO like mini game or Battleground? I, I think for like a Battleground, that'd be great, right? Uh, something where you could just stop doing the normal stuff you want to do and jump over to there. Uh, for that, they'd be great. I wouldn't want to do it all the time. Yeah. It's like Battlegrounds. I enjoy for a while, but then I want to swap back to what I normally do. I know we talked about this a little bit in our own guild chat and whatnot about whether or not this would make an interesting battleground for the live game. The way it's done with having your abilities completely stripped out, I feel that kind of disconnects you a little bit from the character you're trying to create. Is Am I the only yeah. one that feels that way? Yeah, so the, so the way the way that it is um, currently, obviously I'm not a fan of, just because it's kind of detracting from the overall strategy of it. I mean, when they make jokes about it being Fortnite, yeah, it's Fortnite. It you know, is. and if I wanted to play Fortnite, I'd go play Fortnite. But you know, this one, this particular mode is just basically, from what I assume, actually not from what I assume, but from what they've told us, it's it's basically like a light version. It doesn't even have um, one. You kill you kill you kill people a lot quicker than you do. Um, you don't have the skills that you will actually have. You know 
actually, you know, in game as you're actually going around. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that's actually brought out. So I think their intention for this is to uh, really test the system, the combat uh, itself, without necessarily worrying about the specific skills of and you know and such, and allow people to hit it. Um, you know, report specific bugs regarding like you know collision, uh, clipping. Uh, you know, uh, maybe you know uh, the on-hit items and stuff like that. So I'm just pretty sure that they're really using it to gather data and use it as a test, rather than it being a uh, something that's going to be permanent. Well, you're also going to get by limiting skills. You're going to limit the number of test cases you have to look at um, because you have all these number of skills and levels and all this other stuff. If you take that off the table for a little bit. You can then test those things you want to test, and you know exactly what they can do and they can't do. So you have the same amount of tests being done more because you've got them only, only you can use a sword or you can whatever you're going to use. You've got a number of people who are stuck to using that piece during that test because they can't use their skills. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Now, to me, it's also sort of like, sounds like uh, CP list battlegrounds and ESO. But then again... I don't like that because I worked really hard for what I have. Why would I want to battle without it? Hmm. I see in, in my eyes, like I see some people in chat right now, they're talking about the battle Royale game as being almost like a cosmetic, a fun thing like that. I could see that, but I don't foresee the battle Royale being a super competitive PVP experience. And let me explain why in a lot of the super competitive pvp experiences it's about the build you're running the team composition you have and the counter strategies for the team you're going against when it's all random like what this is like when you fall in with nothing and i know in the second game i only killed one person no two people before i got sniped by a guy who was fully decked out like invisible with i guess the crossbow or whatever i hadn't even found anything like a crossbow yet so, it. I'm trying to think of what it was. It was, um, what game was it that, I can't remember what it is right now, but they were trying to make an eSport out of it, and one of the major complaints was the fact that everything was so random and that there was no way for them to actually have a competitive team based around complete 100% RNG. Because then if the other right. person won, it's like, hey, we would have, we're a better team, we just didn't get the, you know, the Fallout yeah, 76 nuke, they did. Yeah, you landed near that item first, so you got the advantage, basically. Right, right. Um, and I don't know. I just I, I like what, to be able to have the skills I would have on a character going in and doing it that way. But I know the way they're, they're balancing PvP in this game is actually more based upon... Um, group versus group versus a 1v1. They've already mentioned they're going with the rock, paper, scissors style of balancing, so there will be classes that are 100% hard counter to other classes. Right, right. So, yeah. No, I, I thought it was fun, though. It was a fun experience. I do have my concerns about, A, the destructibility. I am kind of hoping the destructibility only really happens during sieges or if they keep the battle royale mode um, I also think they need to clean it up a little bit more because yeah. it feels gamey right now okay and what I mean by gamey is I took my sword and I bashed the floor right yeah they'll probably work on the animations at some point um, but the floor just disappeared when it when it died and in a perfect square yeah. and i see uh shin Kaz says B the ba battle royale is just for fun yeah i know this one's definitely just for fun it's more just a question of what they're going to do with it going forward and i definitely think building destructibility needs to be a little bit more jagged i would be kind of disappointed if when a trebuchet flies through a building and it does destroy parts of it but it's a in a perfect square you know like oh they hit the floor oh the square's gone I don't know how you would actually fix that, but that's kind of just something that I'm looking at going, ah. Oh, oh, some quick news. All right, we can queue. Oh, oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> Game is up. Cool. Actually, they're up early, aren't they? 
I didn't think they were supposed to be up for another hour. Cool. Um, yeah. Storms, what are what are your thoughts? Well, I'm sort of I'm stuck in thinking about the um, square hole. Um, but that's, I mean, that's not an issue, I think. That's something they'll fix. That's not something they'll fix. They're just in that point for now in this particular part of the, the build because you're going to have a way of doing that and have that disappear and change its shape based on everything I've seen. They're not going to leave a square hole. They're, they're going to, they're going to improve that. It's just probably not there yet. Sure. Sure. Cause you're going to have to add for every collision you have and every shape you have. If you do a square, there's a lot less, uh, points to think about than if you do it some type of other polygon. Gotcha. Other other concern that I had so far was with the 30 on 30. It wasn't even 30 on 30. It was 30 people total. How do you guys think the scaling is going to go up when it comes to actually how the server is going to work on a larger scale? Because at no point in time, I think, did I see more than three people on my screen because it was Battle Royale. People were running around hiding, getting their gear mm-hmm. or whatever. And it while it was very smooth and that did feel good... I'm concerned that when people start gathering together, it's going to have some issues. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was smooth again. We didn't have that many players on our screen at the same time. And I think the most people that we had, at least I had on it was like maybe 40 or 50. And we were all just in the the pre drop place basically. And we all were just kind of running around without issues, stuff like that. Uh, but I think the the reassuring thing is that they're testing this relatively soon. I mean, what by next quarter we'll we'll know how it holds up, right? Uh, at least with like hundred, hundred or something like that. But well, yeah, you're you're sort of limited with collision on collision. You're sort of limited who could be in the same area, right? Because you, the server isn't doing the whole thing at once, right? It's not doing everybody you can see. There's chunks. It's chunks it out, right? So they're gonna be shards as they go through it. By having collisions that you can't get in the same space, you can't have 500 people in technically, you know, a, a 10 foot area. You're going to limit the amount of server resources in that particular piece. And uh, to finally wrap up this section before we move on to what we want to talk about right after this, we did have a uh, Bane Morth in chat once again goes based on what you guys have seen, do you think the Battle Royale will really be ready to go public in October? We're doing a test, literally, I think Alpha Soul's queuing in right now. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. um, I, I am, am not. Oh, I'm connecting to the game. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Um, based on the last test, it, I, I have my doubts. And the reason why I have my doubts is because when they... The first couple of games was great because a few of us got patched in. We were in there doing our thing, and the games went really smooth until more and more people started getting online. When the download started to finish, that's when they started having server problems and the server started to melt down. Um, I know they pushed out a couple fixes. We're going to see pretty much tonight if it's at all any better than what it was before. Again, this is why you do stress test, right? Um, Mm -hmm. But given the last test, when we started getting closer to that 200 people is when we started having the servers would not let us connect they were crashing. We had to reboot them a lot. So, but everything that technically goes yep. wrong helps you understand the next piece. Sure, absolutely. You're looking for that hockey stick. You're looking for when it goes from little, 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 and then shoots way up. So you're looking for that point so you can find out what happened. Yes, I agree with that completely. But with only one thing, um, and Ash two says Ash two two. <laughs> Because they have two, two says in chat they're doing 750 people tonight. If that's true, I would awesome. be curious how much data they've done. Again, it's hard to get a benchmark after only one test. We ran into issues. How much did they actually learn from those tests? Well, we'll learn tonight, won't we? We we don't know at this point, but you know. It, there's a very good chance that 750 people aren't actually going to be able to get in tonight. Like a very good chance, unless the developers figured out what was causing the issues and say, hey, yeah, we're good. Oh, Happy says it's uh, 1.2 Q. 
K tonight. Even so, I'm really hoping that they ironed out the issues between last week and this week to make sure that we can actually, you know, fix the issues that are in, in, in play. It also depends if it's configuration versus code. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. If, it, if, uh, if it's actually just something with the physical hardware that they're using that's incorrect, not set up optimally, that could be causing issues, um, could be the net code itself. Could be. Could be the pooling, any of that stuff. They, you know, that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Hopefully we gave them a good amount of data on Friday, and today and tomorrow we'll see more. All right, moving on to the next topic that we have. This is actually coming way back from PAX West. Uh, there was the panel recap that we wanted to talk about because there was a lot of interesting information that's going to be released about Alpha 1. Uh, specifically, one of the be key things is that Alpha 1 Phase 1 will feature three different battleground types. We already have the Battle Royale that we are testing during the stress test. But they are also going to have a castle siege mode and a horde mode that we'll be able to actually jump into. Um, Storms, since Alpha and I have been doing a lot of the talking tonight, jumping off here from the PAX West panel recap, was there anything that jumped out to you as being something that was really fascinating or that really stuck out? Did I, did I throw you a curveball? You threw me a curveball, but that's okay. Okay. Um, because the curveballs are cool. Um, to me, uh, when they're talking about the the balancing, uh, the action combat, tab combat, and how that's going to work, that to me didn't stick out, but it registered how, well how they thought about it. Hmm. Gotcha. I see that. Uh. uh... Uh, Keladar, Keladar in chat. Also, if you don't know, he did he does a few streams as well. You should check out his channel, K E L U D A R. He's going to be an Ashes streamer. Pretty cool. Um, he says my favorite part of the panel was hearing the art designers talk about how Steven told them to push the limits and rarely told them it was too much. That was probably my least favorite part because I. I'm not a big fan of the art direction of the game right now, and I really wish they would have stepped it back. But I understand I'm that anytime you're talking about art, it's subjective to the people who are looking at it. So my opinion is I don't like the art style. I wish they would have kind of went back more the Witcher style and less Guild Wars 2. I guess that's the closest I can think about it, or Arc Age. Wish they would have stepped that back. Some people like one versus the other. There's really not a right or wrong answer. It's what you like or what you don't. But because it's art, it's subjective to the person looking at it. So, mm. so I really like the one where they came out with the uh, the housing one, the, the building. I think that looked tremendous. Um. V8 Thunderbird in chat, and I'm sorry when we get to that, he actually did ask a question. He says, my friend got an email to do the stress test, and I didn't. Is there a reason we have the same Kickstarter bundle? The They're actually choosing this just based on, they're going down the list from the 10K packages all the way through. Yes, you guys are probably have the same one, but they had a set number that they wanted to hit, which in this case was 1,250 tests, and they went down the line and said, okay, we're going to, as soon as they hit 1,250, they stop. So if you were Kickstarter backer, or if he was Kickstarter backer at 100, and you were 120, that's probably why you didn't get one and he did. He just, you're on the same package, so they went down the line based on the number. Anyway, uh, Storms, what were you saying? No, I was just commenting on the building, I'm uploading the picture so you can see it, but the building note that they put out there, um, to me, that particular piece uh, that's tremendous of course i'm not getting into the game today but that particular piece of building is tremendous right and um what they're saying in chat what uh, uh kelador saying in chat he's like he likes that they're talking about customization and i do agree they were talking during i guess one of their most recent live streams they talked about how modular they want the pieces of armor to be to the point where if you want to have multiple belts for whatever reason, you can have multiple belts on your armor, 
versus not. I do agree. That is something that is really cool. I'm glad to see that they're pushing that. So, yeah. No, that is pretty neat. Um, <laughs> uh, Red Nas Live. I know this may be a silly question, but when will this stress test stop and A1 Alpha start? I'm pumped to play. It's not really a silly question. Barring any issues with the stress test that they have to go, okay, we need longer. The goal is actually supposed to be the third week of, uh, or the last week of September. I think the week of the 24th, I believe they said. So, you know. I have the same question. That's okay. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's fine. Of course, that may be delayed, especially if as these stress tests go on, they say, hey, we have a problem, right? Yeah, if they have a problem, you, you want them to stop. You want them to fix it before they go on. Because once you start into that test schedule, you want to make sure you've got it laid out and not continuing with things that could have caused a problem later. Yeah, exactly. And as uh, V Thunderbird said, so Alpha 1 isn't here. It's just a select few get getting to try the game to stress test it. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. We're trying to... Could you imagine at this point, like we said about the live streaming... We were there. Alpha, how long were we there? We were in chat last uh, week for four or five hours? Yeah, like four hours or so. Yeah, four hours. And we got two games apiece, I think. Maybe three if you were lucky. I <laughs> People wanted to stream this right off the bat. Obviously, they want to stream it right off the bat. But the majority of people who are watching Twitch right now will probably look at this and go, Wow. The game is terrible at this point, right? Because it keeps crashing, there's bugs, there's stuff like that. They want to make sure that it at least looks stable before they actually go into this. So, yeah, it makes sense. Going on to the three different battleground types, like they said, the last man standing mode, their goal is to have 100 players. Various weapons and skills will be available for testing. There will be unique elements and certain skills, weapons to interact with from the train from a defensive and offensive standpoint. Uh, you can build buildings, watchtowers, defensive structures, 100% Fortnite, which is what we're playing right now. It's Fortnite. That's what it is. Coming up after that, the Castle Siege mode, which is supposed to begin in December, is where we're actually going to have objective base with defenders and attackers trying to take key strategic areas. I like that. Castle Siege should be a lot of fun. And then, of course, Horde mode, which I'm most excited about. The cooperative working together against the monsters in a wave-based progression. Those were something that I thought was really, really cool. I'm excited for Horde mode, especially for our PvE players. Those who want to actually do the PvE side of stuff, being able to defend a node from hordes of monsters coming at you is something that is... I, I really like that. It kind of reminds me of anyone who played World of Warcraft, anyone... Um, Mount Hyjal? The very first boss in Mount Hydra oh, yeah. was you had your base and the monsters kept coming from all around trying to overtake the base. I thought that was really, really cool. Uh, Storms, anything else? I'm just reiterating the, 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 all these different modes are going to be really interesting to tie together because one of the things I enjoy about MMOs is you can go in to do one thing and then you end up doing another and you find out you enjoy that more uh, when i started eso it was all pve mm -hmm. that's all i did and all of a sudden i started to hear about this ic thing and i got sucked in and that's almost all i do now is, is ic so to me this many different objectives this many different modes in ashes is going to be tremendous because you have all these different things to pull people in right and uh, as I see Bainworth and Chad's asking, people can play as monsters. Yes, you can actually play as the as the monster. So it does add an element of monster PvP into the game as well. So that's actually pretty neat. It's something I'm really excited for. Mm -hmm. Going on, they're talking about Alpha 1 Phase 2, which is supposed to be in the second quarter of 2009. They're actually, at this point... Is not just going to be the action combat system. They're actually going to integrate it with the tab target. And that's where we're going to start seeing the Ashes of Creation combat the way it was designed to be. Right now, it's Fortnite. It's very action-y. That's how it's designed to be. 
going forward, we're going to see them combine the two. Alpha Soul, I know we talked about this a little bit. Do, are you going to see issues? Like, I think this is going to be a mess when it first comes out, especially seeing how the combat is right now. I think it will be as well, too. Um, sorry, it's kind of hard for me to talk because I realized I didn't start Discord in admin mode. So um, <laughs> my talk doesn't come unless I minim not minimize, but, you know, move yeah. to the next screen. Uh, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> we can definitely tell who's alpha testing right now in the middle of a show and who's not. Um, when they integrate tab target in the second quarter of 2009... Given the fact the way that they're doing the action combat now, I'm I'm seeing tab target is going to be an interesting way of the how I don't know how they're going to implement it. I really don't. He now he's quiet again. He must he must be dying at some point. <laughs> um, I'll move on at this point. So nodes will fully be able to progress to level three. That will include declaring citizenship, housing, shops, governments, and freeholds. So we'll be able to test that stuff around. <laughs> yeah, uh, Keldor, as you can see right now, if you're watching us on YouTube or on Twitch after the fact, um, Alpha Soul is currently testing Alpha 1 stress test, and the joy on his face is <laughs> enough of a reason. And I'm sitting here going, man, I really should wrap up this show sooner than later so that I can get it. you want to play. There you go. Yeah. But, you know, I, I as the main chair of the podcast, I, I have to wait. So mm -hmm. you know how that goes. <laughs> Happy says if he died faster, he could talk more. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Alpha Soul, you're going to have to take off your glasses. People are trying to look through your glasses to see what's going no, on. I'm just kidding. Anyway, so during the Phase 2, we're actually going to start seeing the game come into its own with four of the nine races available. All eight base arch types going to be available, a quarter of the world map, and they're hoping to have a concurrent server population of 1,500 people. And two to three servers. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's going to be interesting. Indeed. That's going to be very interesting. Okay, so what it was is I was running from the um, from the boundary, basically. Killed some guy, almost died from the boundary, and I'm safe now. There's 11 of us left. I got to go kill some more people. <laughs> <laughs> and run from the boundary. All right, all right, we got it, we got it. All right, so then Alpha 2 is supposed to do in quarter 3 of 2009. So at that point, that's a pretty quick between Alpha 2 and... Our Alpha 1 Phase 2 and Alpha 2 is only a three-month period before we actually get in to what would be the persistent side mm -hmm. of this. All right. Does anyone have uh, or, like any other thing that you saw from here that you thought was really cool? Storms, before we kind of... Oh, honestly, from a, from a professional... I want to see their test plan. It just got to be just enormous to do all of this in in a quarter to go from alpha one phase two to alpha two in a quarter the test plan has got to be just huge i mean it really just boggles my mind how they're going to be able to do that but they've done it so far so i'm very impressed gotcha um i kind of want to hit on this one question before we wrap up because this one is pretty near and dear to my heart as well as i know a few other people how will rating be balanced around both action combat and tab target without making one superior to the other? I know we had this own conversation with our own Discord about PvE versus PvP, thinking that action would probably be more the PvP side, whereas the tab may end up being closer to the PvE side. We jumped to that conclusion right off the bat. I'm curious myself. Steven goes, we know that balance is probably going to be the most difficult process. So many players, so many class combinations, unique skill tree choices, and so on. Shorter answer is testing. We'll have lots of testing for this. Also, this is why we are opening up to every this up to everyone during phase one. We want player input. We want to see every possible combination of skills from the action standpoint. Uh, we have over 40,000 people signed up for alphas and betas, and we want the testing phase to give us a lot of data. So, the thing I'm thinking about here, 
Um, let's see. I wonder how many. Can you guys post Discord links or a website? Uh, there isn't one below this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, picture will take you where you need to go. And, of course, for those who are interested, Discord as well. You could join our community Discord. I definitely encourage that because it's awesome. My problem is I know this became an issue, especially during the when I played World of Warcraft very heavily. People were complaining about, oh, this ability is way too strong. So it got nerfed for PvP because it was too strong in PvP. And then the PvE players started complaining that's like, great. Why did you have to destroy my my ability that I used a lot only because some PvP players said it was overpowered? I really think that's <laughs> that's going to happen a lot where you're going to get very mixed feedback based on the type of play that the person prefers. If the person mm -hmm. prefers PvP, they're going to go, yeah, that ability is way too overpowered, blah, blah, blah. Then you're going to have the people who are very into the PvE and the theory crafting and the number crunching from that side of it and go, no, that ability is not overpowered in PvE when you're dealing with a boss that has 10 times your hit points. So why would you nerf it for PvP? That is constantly an issue in games that have both one and the other. What are you thinking, Storms? Well, I'm just thinking through, I'm back on the tab targeting. Um piece of it because it, tonight in fact i used to have targeting to take out with a snipe right so if you're in pvp and snipe you want to use tap targeting if you're in fast quick action you're not going to want to use that you're going to want to use your action target it's going to be very complicated to use them together right. depending what you're playing oh yeah no i i definitely agree and uh, i know spectral he said they talked about different hit boxes especially for the pvp the PvP side of things where you'll be able to hit head, torso, and extremities. I wonder how they're going to do hit boxes for shorter races like the dwarves. Are boxes. odd. Well, well, then that's a balance problem in and of itself just because then if you're going to do PvP and you're not rolling a dwarf, then you have a problem. Well, what you're going to balance that with, right? If they have smaller hit boxes, do they have smaller what to compensate for that smaller hitbox are we just not doing phrasing anymore no okay sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm making archer reference and there we go i don't know like because i know in other games the hitboxes were normalized to fit one or the other i don't see how that's going to be possible with having head chest and you know arms legs extremities as separate hitboxes. I really don't see how that's at all going to be that's possible. It's going to be interesting how they're going to play it. It's also going to be interesting how, if they do it the right way, it's going to race will really matter on what you play. Right now, yeah, some games it matters a little bit based on pluses and minuses and racial statistics. But if you have like this situation physically smaller, they're going to be better at some classes than others just because of their size. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right, guys, it looks like we're nearing the end of our show because we're near the end here. Guys, where can people follow you? Alpha Soul, are you at a point where you can tell people where they can follow you? <laughs> Doesn't look like it. <laughs> Storms, why don't you go ahead? He's busy. All right. So for me, you can find me in the ESO. You can find me in the DCN uh, Discord. You can also find me at uh, digitalpiperstudios.com, working on the Halloween version of something, and uh, we'll go from there. Nice. Are you good, Alpha? Yeah, I am good. I made it to number three, and I got killed by Alex, who has this super, super jump spell. That's how he was getting Ah, whatever. All right, yeah. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> Where, Where can people <laughs> find you? <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, they can find me on obviously uh, Dungeons Dungeon Crawler Network channel, and you can also find me on YouTube. Someone YouTube drinking. slash the R A. <laughs> sorry, I was watching this and I was trying to see who won, and that guy Alex ended up winning. <laughs> uh Alpha. You know, it was funny. It was before we did this show, I said, hey, we have a test. And I think Alpha's like, are we going to do it? 
are we going to do a show? I'm like, well, yeah, it's the only day we can actually do a show. We're going to have to do this show because everyone, I think you're going away, Alpha or Storms. I forget. Someone's going away. Yeah, yeah. I'm going away. Yeah, I'm you're going, going away. away. So we have to fit it in here so we can actually talk about all this tonight. Uh, I was kind of, mm-hmm. they, they did say they were going to push the Alpha back, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. Oh, apparently yeah, they, they got it. It wasn't pushed back that far. Apparently think, it worked. No, apparently they fixed whatever the problem was. So, yeah. All right, but before you f- know where to find me, we do have multiple emails. We are going to get to those in a later episode. So do not fear because we got some great emails from the Ashes of Creation community that they want to have ask. Uh, one of them being subject of role play in Ashes of Creation and the title of The Mad Rush. Those are two things that we are going to be talking about in a future episode. Stay tuned there. If you want to follow me, you could do so on Twitter at Agelos, A-G-G-E-L-O-S underscore D-C-N. And of course, you can join our awesome community Discord if you head on over to DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com. There is a link right there on the front page to say, hey, join community Discord. If you're interested in joining us in Ashes of Creation, Check out our guild, Hands of Fate. It's our gaming community that's forged by the listeners of our gaming podcast, and we have a chapter now for Ashes of a Creation. We are a PVX guild that will be playing out of the North American Data Center, wherever that's going to be, and we invite players from all over the world to join us. We actually currently are an international community, having multiple people from all over the place, EU, Oceanic, And actually, I think we have a couple people playing out of Japan. Not necessarily for Ashes, but we do have some people from Japan, which is pretty cool. Anyway, uh, our goal, of course, is to do some raiding, small-scale PvP, crafting, gathering, node-based PvP, a.k.a. open world, because we love doing that kind of stuff. And, of course, growing our amazing community, which, hey, is pretty awesome. Thank you, Arkaneer. He's the best. He's my... uh, co-GM, one of our co-GMs uh, of Hands of Fate, and also my co-host over on Tales of Tamriel, our Elder Scrolls Online podcast. You can actually find that podcast and everything else we do over at DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com. There you can find links to all of our social media, including Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Be sure to check out our Patreon at Patreon.com slash DungeonCrawlerNetwork if you want to help support this show. You can also do so by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes so people know that we are a real podcast, that we say real words. (laughs) And sometimes it matters. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of From the Ashes. And we're going to see you next time. See you later, everybody. Later, guys.